everyone. We're the Good Doctors of Abbey Research, and we are here with our video announcing our celebration of National Women's History Month. Yay! Hooray! Uh, as you may or may not know, we like to celebrate uh, the nationally designated months here in the United States, or international months and days, whatever we fancy, because they're a great opportunity to uh, shed some light on maybe voices and stories and experiences that don't often get a lot of attention. So we've just finished our Black History Month coverage. We're rocking into Irish American Heritage Month and National Women's History Month because they're in the same month, which is a little exhausting. But we're producing content all through this month talking about issues facing women, highlighting some awesome voices and some women from history. But we wanted to do a quick video today just to talk a little bit about some of our experiences as women in our different working fields. Uh, and the most asked question or issue that we uh, are asked about as women in our fields. So I, for anyone who we haven't met before, hi, I'm Kristen. <laughs> and I am part of a family business and have been since my father bought this company in 1991. My brother and I are taking over for our father. And I am frequently in rooms of business owners or of C-suite executives, one of the only women, if not the only woman. I'm certainly one of the youngest people and one of the youngest women. I've been in several rooms where I am both the youngest and the only woman. Um, in terms of leadership specifically, uh, our parent company is in manufacturing, which is a specifically gendered space still in the United States and globally. Um, but leadership in terms of corporations, small businesses, nonprofits, you know, kind of all that leadership as a co on companies is still very gendered towards um, men. And so I'm finding myself in a lot of very male coded spaces. So the question I get a lot is some version of how do you do it? How do you navigate being a daughter and an employee and a business partner? And how do you navigate being a woman in the room? who is educated and kind of all these things. And the answer is difficultly. It's, there are some things I'm really comfortable in. There are some ways, there are some rooms I walk into and I can kind of read quickly how I'm supposed to react. But then there's other times where I think we're in a professional environment and somebody calls me sweetheart. And I don't know, I, to me that means they're trying to demean me or treat me like their child or a romantic, potential in some certainly I've had old men flirt with me in circumstances that it's really inappropriate um I don't know how to react and it's like I don't know what to do with my hands and it feels very uncomfortable and I'm very grateful for training I've received to be able uh to kind of look at that person and say please don't call me that um that's not my name and there are times where I've been really grateful to have my husband with me because he will say her name is doctor um there are times that I'm very grateful to have my brother with me um, cause my brother and my father will also uh, get very angry very quickly when I'm disrespected, but it's hard and it's weird. And there are so many spaces I'm in that I really would just like to be Kristen, but I'm the only woman in the room or one of the few. And so the, my woman-ness is the primary thing that people notice. I'm the only one in the room wearing a dress and that makes me stand out, those kind of things. This isn't anything like a lot of the marginalization that a lot of people face, but it is a marginalization that a lot of us do face. And the issues of International Women's Day that we'll be talking about Abby Research, but also a lot of other people will be talking about. Sometimes I read the suffragette history and I'm like, oh, have we really come that far? I'm really grateful we got the vote, don't get me wrong. Um, we really love that Equal Rights Amendment. And any day now. Any day now. Any day now, Congress and Senate. Uh, would also, I've been doing a lot of research on Title VII that I'll be talking to you guys about this coming month um, and for the rest of the year, and exactly the limitations of sex-based discrimination lawsuits and what that all looks like. It's still not an equal society, um, and so anyone who wants to say that because we had a female candidate run for president means that sexism is over um, is, not, is not fully aware of the full matrix of systemic oppressions that are still in the United States and in the world, full stop. So that's kind of my experience. I really love my job. I love the role I get to play. I love the fact that my humanness is valued and part of that is being a woman. Um, but there's also, man, there's also some times where I was just like, it would be really great to be a dude. 
a lot of my problems right now would be solved if I was a dude. Um, and that's just the honest truth, the honest truth. So but Dr. Hinson hasn't been in business for as long as I have, but she's certainly been in the academy. Yeah, and it's really interesting just listening to your story. And I was thinking about the perceptions that I had going into higher education postgraduate research. And like, I, I think that the outside perception of academia is it is a lot of stuffy old white men, but I think there's also a perception that academia as a field is a lot more egalitarian. Mm -hmm. because, like as long as your ideas are good or as long as you're really smart. Or right, something like that, because yeah. like we're all educated. So we're supposed to know better than to call people sweetheart or to expect the women to always deliver the coffee or be in charge of running the table, um, you know, at the beginning of a meeting or, and stuff like that. So for me, going into it, I had measured expectations um, that the experience wasn't going to be, uh, that my womanness wasn't going to be as front and center as my identity as a student um, and as my identity as a researcher and my, my identity as a colleague amongst a lot of my equals who are, as in most fields, predominantly men. Um, and I should say we'd studied in the United Kingdom, which is a very uh, similar but also different gendered experience um, culturally, pretty similar to the United States. Um, and so I was going into it thinking like, I'm going to be with my peers and, and this is going to be great. Uh, I had and have the great privilege of having a fantastic uh, mentor who is a man. Um, who, if I was ever going to use the term like gender blind. Oh my God, he is. He is. He is as close um, as you get. He is as close as you get. Um, a lot of times that means he doesn't necessarily see uh, systemic inequalities as well. Um, but if you tell him about him, he's like, oh yeah, that's, that's awful. I didn't think about it that way. Um, but in terms of recognizing levels of, of capability and equality, I came from that privilege in my undergraduate. Um, so going into my postgraduate, I was like, this is going to be amazing. And then she found out. And then I walked into the first room and realized I was one of the few women there. I was also studying an area that um, is a hyper-masculinized identity and therefore had led to a majority of men studying that identity. So every conference I went to, every lecture, every book launch, there was like two women in the room. I was the, oftentimes the only academic. Um, there were women from the community in the room. So yeah, my experiences sadly come a little bit too similar to Dr. Uh, Kristen's in terms of um, being asked to be an organizer for an event or having the idea with a, a colleague of mine to start an event and being um, the person who was asked to do a lot more of the organizing work, the setting up of the table, the printing of the flyers, all of that kind of stuff. Um, you know, the, the running of the tables at, at certain things and not necessarily making the coffee, but the academic equivalent, equi equivalent of, of, making the coffee. of making the coffee. Um, so it's certainly something that needs to be worked on in the academic field as well. Um, I feel like we are gaining some ground and, you know, as we, we kind of talked about, it's so important to have allies with you in that space. Mm -hmm. uh, and Kristen mentioned um, her husband and her brother who are really great allies when you're in these spaces. Um, and I certainly had colleagues and supervisors um, who were allies for me when I needed it um, and who would confront, a, you know, an ageist or a sexist question from somebody in the audience and kind of stand up for my pedigree as an academic and for my qualifications. Um, but it was certainly an environment in which I was much more aware of my gender. Mm -hmm. Previously, all my work before that had been in retail, which is gendered, but not in that overt kind of discriminatory way. Um, that was the most aware I've been of my gender is walking into rooms um, in that academic space. Yeah. But it's helped me learn like Dr. Kristen said, some coping mechanisms, some way to deal with difficult statements or conversations. Um, and it's given me an interest uh, and an impetus to continue to study gender relations and uh, to understand all of the different ways in which people of different gender identities are marginalized in all different kinds of spaces, mm -hmm. um, digital and in-person, every field, you all name it, all the time. Um, so those are, I think, our thoughts for Women's National Women's History Month here in the United States. 
Um, keep a lookout for our social media posts and our blogs and our graphics. And we have lots of feelings. Fun little things that will be happening throughout the month. But we hope that this little insight into our own experiences has given you some food for thought, maybe about your own experiences of your gender yeah. uh, or experiences of people that are differently gendered than you. Uh, so celebrate the women and the history that you can this uh, time. You know, we can celebrate women all the time. We can celebrate black people all the time. It just doesn't have to be during the designated months, but it's certainly a great opportunity to raise some visibility. So absolutely go forth and raise celebrate women and raise visibility. We leave you with that. Bye.